guys, my name's Courtney and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm in a different recording location today because as some of you might know, my daughter is in her own room now and she's down for a nap. That is where I used to record, so this is my new recording space. As you can tell by the title of this video, these are the five pieces of mum advice that I was given before having Talia or in the first few months of having Talia. There is so much unwanted advice that you get as a new mum, but here are my top five ones that I got and why I think they're useless. The first one is probably the most common one, and that is nap when your baby naps. First of all, when your baby is only a few weeks old, all they do is sleep. So unless you wanna nap 16 hours a day, that advice just doesn't make sense. And even later on, every baby and every person is different. And every time Talia was down for a nap, I needed to do housework or cook so that I had something to eat. Because for those of you who don't know, I'm by myself. So if I didn't do stuff while she was napping, things didn't get done. Maybe napping when your baby works for you. As I said, everyone's different. But for me personally, napping when she napped just wasn't an option. What I'm trying to say with this point is don't feel guilty for doing whatever you decide to do with this. If you want to nap when your baby's napping, do that and don't feel bad about it. If you need the rest, absolutely do that. But if you don't feel like you need the rest or that you have no clean clothes or food to eat and you absolutely need to do that while your baby is sleeping, don't let people make you feel bad for that. I had a lot of people try and make me feel bad for doing what I needed to do when my baby was asleep and they just kept saying, no, you need to be sleeping, what are you doing? And it's like, yeah, okay, I need to sleep but I also need to eat and I need to have clothes on my back. And because I was doing it alone with no one to help me, I needed to make those things happen. It didn't just magically happen for me. Number two for unuseful advice was don't leave the house until your baby has their first vaccinations. This was something that I struggled with. Within the first few weeks of having Talia, I left the house pretty much every day, whether it was to just walk around the block pushing the pram or go to the shops and have some retail therapy. I mean, sure, I had stitches and I was in pain some of the time, but I needed to get out of the house for my mental health. I met up with a bunch of friends when she was a few weeks old. I think she was maybe like five weeks old or something like that. And one of them said to me, I can't believe you're leaving the house before she has her injections. And it made me feel terrible. I felt like a terrible mother. And getting her injections before leaving the house was something that crossed my mind when I had her. But I knew that if I stayed in the house for the first six weeks of her life and didn't leave, I would spiral into postpartum depression. I had a feeling that I was prone to get depression. I'm not an overly optimistic person. Getting out of the house really helped me clear my mind and keep me connected with my life. It made me feel like I'm still me and I can do other things other than change a bum or breastfeed. I was still getting out of the house, I was still seeing people. I could see how being locked in a house for six weeks could spiral anyone into a depression, let alone a new mum with all of those postpartum hormones going on. It just doesn't seem like a good mix to me. So regardless of whether you decide to stay at home for the first six weeks of baby's life or leave the house every few days to get some air for your mental health, don't feel bad about what you decide to do because like I said, everybody's different and everybody handles every situation differently. Looking after yourself as a new mother or just a mother in general is extremely important to you and to how you are as a mother and to your mental health. So please just look after yourself regardless of what that looks like for you. Number three is rely on your friends and family. This is a good point. I understand why you can, you should rely on your friends and family. But to me, when I think about that, I think about friends and family coming over to help you you know, tidy up the house or prepare meals for you or just drop off meals at your front door or maybe do your washing for you so you have clothes to wear. That didn't really happen for me. I didn't have a whole lot of help in that area and not because I have bad friends and family but because I struggle to ask for help when I need it. I'm just one of those people that I like to do everything by myself and I like to feel independent. But the part of this point that I really struggle with is that people were trying to 
force their help when it came to Talia. They wanted me to leave my baby with them in the first few months of her life so that I could go watch a movie or get a pedicure or whatever it may be. But due to some circumstances in my life, I'm a pretty protective mother of Talia and I just can't picture leaving her alone with somebody for an extended period of time. I have left her alone with very close trusted friends and family for an hour or two here and there. Very rarely do I do that. So don't let people make you feel bad or pressure you into leaving your baby with them if you don't feel comfortable with it. I get very bad anxiety when I leave Talia with anybody other than her father. And that's fairly normal for a new mum. But that anxiety is exacerbated by people trying to force their help on me. <laughs> I appreciate that they're trying to help, I understand that. But if I'm saying, no, I don't want to leave my baby with you, or if I'm just not accepting your help for when you want to look after my baby, there's a reason behind that. I'm not doing it to spite you. I just have anxiety about it. Don't let people pressure you into it. So yes, rely on friends and family when it comes to them helping you out with everything other than taking your child for an entire day, unless you feel comfortable with that. If you feel comfortable with that, go for your life. If you feel comfortable with them taking your baby for a week, do that if that's what you need to do. But for me personally, I felt mum guilt and I felt bad if I left my baby alone with somebody for more than so many hours. So I didn't do it and that's okay too. All I needed to do was make sure that I am looking after my mental health the best way that I can because like I said, everybody's different. So every piece of advice that you're given isn't gonna work for every single person. Number four is breastfeed, don't use formula. This one has recently, I've only just recently realized how much this piece of advice affected me as a new mother. I always breastfed Talia. She was exclusively breastfed until I introduced solids and she's just turned one and we've just stopped breastfeeding and I swapped her to formula. For some reason, I felt like if I was going to introduce formula or mix feed, I would be failing her or I, I would be failing as a mother because of what people told me that you know breast is best and whatever and yes if you're looking at breast milk and formula breast milk is best fed aside but your mental health and your baby's development is more important than other people's opinions and when I say that what I mean is I was unaware that I was probably not producing enough milk for Talia she wasn't putting on weight Within six months, she didn't put on any weight. She was constantly cranky, and I just thought that that's who she was as a baby. And she was still waking up every two hours throughout the night. Ever since I've introduced formula, she's sleeping through the night now. She's just a happier baby in general, and she's finally putting on weight. So I realized that all I needed to do was introduce formula as a form of nutrition for her and she was going to thrive. But because of all of the opinions and the fact that I was worried what people would think of me, which is very unlike me, I didn't introduce formula and she kind of suffered as a result of that. And I really regret not introducing it earlier. I was very strong-minded and stubborn when it came to breastfeeding. And No, no, breastfeeding is all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna introduce formula. But in reality, I should have at least mix fed and maybe did a bottle or two of formula a day as well as breastfeeding because you're still breastfeeding. You're just mixing it with formula, if that makes sense. So whichever thing you decide to do, don't feel guilty about it. Do you see a pattern here? <laughs> with all of these points, whatever you decide to do, whether it be breastfeed or formula or a mixture of the both, don't feel bad about it. Just own it because your baby and their development and them thriving is what is important. And either way, that's what's going to happen unless you're in my position and you're not producing enough breast milk and you don't know it, but you're too stubborn or worried what people will think to introduce formula. Number five is no screen time before the age of two. Who is saying this? Who are the people that are saying no screen time before the age of two? Do these people live in this century. There are screens everywhere and it's almost impossible to keep your kids away from them. I'm assuming what they mean is, you know, don't stick your kid in front of the TV for 10 hours. But hey, you know what? Motherhood is just getting through each day alive. And some days are harder than other. And some days you need the wiggles 
to get you through the day. If you need an hour to yourself, especially when you're a single parent and you don't have any help, you need an hour or two to yourself sometimes. And sometimes putting them in front of the TV makes them happy. And you can get an hour or two of quiet time without having to feel guilty of leaving your baby alone with someone else. If you don't feel comfortable with leaving your baby with someone, screen time is a good alternative. Don't get me wrong, I don't leave her in front of the TV for like 14 hours a day, but if I need to get something done around the house and she's awake and she's at my feet and she's crying, I can stick her in front of the TV with the wiggles and she will be happy to watch it for 20, 30 minutes while I get what I need done. Could you imagine if you didn't have any screen time at all for your children for the first two or three years of their life? None at all, no screen time. And then all of a sudden they turn two and you're like, here's a TV, a massive plasma screen. I could imagine that would be extremely overwhelming for them. This is the world we live in. There are screens everywhere, there's TVs, everybody has mobile phones and tablets and there's no use hiding it from your child until they turn a certain age. Because let's be honest, kids can operate tablets by the time they're two. So you've got little Joey over here playing games on the tablet, while this kid over here is eating dirt, which is fine. I ate dirt as a kid, I get it, because that was the times back then. But I see two-year-olds who can work tablets, which that's a different opinion in itself. That can be seen as bad or good. I think as long as your child isn't just sitting in front of the TV and you're also mentally stimulating them in other ways and getting them outside and having other activities like reading books to them and developing all their senses, as long as that is happening, screen time is not going to kill them. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. That is just my opinions on the top five pieces of advice that I got as a new mum that were just completely useless or just made me feel bad. The point of this video is that everybody is different. Every mum is different. Every person is different. Every baby is different. One piece of advice isn't going to work for everybody. That makes no sense. So take every piece of advice that you get with a grain of salt and just do what works for you to get through each day. Motherhood is hard. Some days are worse than others. So on those down days that you really need some help, do whatever you need to do to get through the day, whether it be screen time or give your baby to a family member for the day, whatever works for you, don't feel bad about it. Your mental health is crucial to your baby's happiness and it's crucial to your happiness too. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. If you haven't already subscribed, you can subscribe below if you'd like to follow our journey. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!